Today's Gospel reading, our Lord gives us the two great commandments. The first, of course, is to love God with your whole heart and your whole being and all your strength and all your might. And the second is to love your neighbor as yourself. Now, we all know this, but I just wanted to comment on what this commandment really entails, especially the one about loving God wholeheartedly. When we think of the Ten Commandments, most of the Ten Commandments are stated in the negative sense as thou shalt not commit adultery or bear false witness or covet thy neighbor's goods or, or whatever. So they're, they're stated in a negative sense. And because they're stated in a negative sense, in some way they're easier to remember. Take, for example, ones that are stated in a positive sense as, as something that we need to do or should be doing, such as honoring your parents. Note that the commandment isn't, thou shalt not dishonor your parents, but remember to honor your parents. Thou shalt honor thy parents. So what does that entail, honoring your parents? It's something that we have to do in order to be obeying the commandment. You know, to the commandment to remember to keep holy this the Sabbath day or the Lord's day, that's kind of easy because there's seven days in a week, so you're kind of reminded. But to honor your parents, what does that mean? What would that entail for you to honor your parents, perhaps right now or, or in the future? So it's a little bit harder to, to remember, and it's a little bit harder to implement in our lives than the other commandments that are thou shalt not. So this great commandment to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength, that's quite a demanding requirement that God is asking of us. And what exactly is love? You know, we can say many things about love. Sometimes when I ask people, what do you think love is? They say, oh, it's a feeling. It's kind of like an emotion. No, not really. Those emotions, those feelings are part of love, yes. But love isn't just those things. You know, sometimes initially when people fall in love, they may have these warm and fuzzy feelings. But true love is, is much more, more than that. It's, it's that commitment to, to be there for the person no matter what. Kind of like parents loving their children. Very often when we think of romantic love, often... The, re the, the reason people fall in love is because they see some goodness in the other person or some beauty, some appeal. There's something good about the other person that they really like and they, they want that. They want to be around that. And I think one of the things that, that really appeals to people is knowing that they are loved or appreciated by the other. In other words, when the attraction is mutual, it's much more likely that the relationship will develop and grow and possibly uh, they may get married. So recognizing the goodness in the other is an important aspect of falling in love and remaining in love. Now imagine if we applied this principle to our neighbor, to everyone. You know, some people, we, sometimes people, they, they see certain individuals and they just kind of dismiss them. Oh, I don't want to have anything to do with that person. There is some good in every person, especially when we see them from the point of view of God. If we view them according to earthly standards, well, oh, they don't have a job or they're unkept or whatever, they may not appeal to us. But when we see them as a human being created in the image of God, they should appeal to us. And the more we get to know that person, the more we will see that they have a lot of good qualities. We will be more understanding of the situation that they are in. So when it comes to God, how do we see the goodness in God that should motivate us to love him? And, and keep in mind that we, we, we are called to do this because it's a commandment that's stated in the positive sense as something we should do as opposed to something we should not do. So in order to get to know God, we can reflect on the beauty of nature. It's a reflection of God's goodness, his, his, his logic, his, his uh, beauty also. So the beauty of nature, the beauty of creation, it's a reflection of God's goodness, his beauty. Reflecting on this could, could hopefully motivate us to love God, but also 
what he has done for us, reflecting on these things, meditating on these things, taking our sins upon the cross, uh, taking our sins upon himself, dying on the cross for us, and the extent to which he suffered. If we see that he's willing to do all these things for us, we cannot help but respond with, with love. Now, remember what I said in, in human relationships, that, you know, the initial attraction, there, there's some beauty, some goodness, some appeal. And one of the things that is most appealing is knowing that that person is also attracted to you and perhaps loves you. And if we understood how much God loves us, we cannot help but respond with love. Now, all of these things, you know, they make perfect sense when I explain it as I, just, I have just done. But the problem is we don't take the time to reflect upon these things. And this is why all the great saints, all the, the spiritual, great spiritual authors, they point out that in order to grow in the spiritual life, we have to meditate on the truths of our faith. We have to meditate on these things. And, you know, in human terms, what is this meditation? Imagine a young couple falling in love. They're constantly thinking about each other. They're texting each other. They're calling each other. They want to spend time with each other. They want to look into each other's eyes. They want to study each other's facial features. They want to get to know everything about that person. And when they are separated, that person is always on their mind. They're always thinking about that person. And they, they love that person. And you see, this is kind of an analogy for how we ought to be with God. In other words, we should be loving God at all times. We should be texting him by means of our prayers on a regular basis. We should be communicating with him. We should be meditating on what he is like, on what he has done for us. By looking at Jesus, meditating on his life, we get to see what God, the, the, the eternal Father, is, is really like, the, the, what the whole Trinity is really like. And if we took the time to do this, we cannot help but grow in love of God. Another good thing to do is to ask God to help us to grow in love of him. But this meditation is very, very important. But unfortunately, people don't make time for it. Or they're so busy they don't have time for it. But it's one of the most important things in our lives, especially when we consider that this great commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. Like, this is the most important thing. Why is it the most important thing? Not because it's going to benefit God, because it's going to benefit us. Recall how two weeks ago I had mentioned that to be truly human, to be fully human, is to be filled with love for everyone and to put that love into practice. And the more we do so, the more fulfilled we become, the more content and the more happy we become even here and now. So God gives us this commandment because he wants us to be happy. Because a lot of people don't have time for meditation or to spend quality time in meditation, God understands this and this is why God gave us an alternative, something that I had already mentioned before the devotion of the Most Holy Rosary. So the Rosary, as I mentioned, is not just reciting the Hail Marys, but the meditation on the different mysteries. So if you don't have time for meditation, if you don't have time to study the scriptures or to reflect on the life of Christ, pray the Rosary daily, as Our Lady uh, Fatima and so many other apparitions has encouraged us or asked us to do so, as the Church encourages us to do so, as the great saints encourage us to do so. Let us do what we can to get to know Christ better, to get to know what God is like better, so that we can appreciate all that he has done for us and hopefully grow in love of him.